हेलो एवरी वन सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी एन इंट्रोडक्ट इंट्रोडक्टरी लेक्चर टू टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन और समटाइम्स ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज स्टूडेंट्स टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नो वाई द नेम स्टूडेंट वेल द वन हु इन्वेंटेड दिस डब्ल्यू एस गोसेट आई थिंक इट वॉज गोसेट सो इट नाइनटीन जीरो एट वेन यू पब्लिश द पेपर दैट टाइम दी टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस एंड वेल एक्चुअली वॉज वर्किंग इन अन कंपनी इट वॉज सम आयरिश ब्रीवरी कंपनी वेयर देर वॉज अ पॉलिसी दैट इफ समन इज पब्लिशिंग द रिसर्च ही और शी शुड नॉट यूज हिज हॉर हर नेम सो सिंस ही कूडेंट ही यूज हिज नेम सो वॉट टू राइट सो दैट्स वाई ही जस्ट रोट स्टूडेंट सो दैट्स वाई इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ स्टूडेंट टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एज वेल ओके सो दैट्स द स्टोरी बिहाइंड द वर्ड स्टूडेंट ओके सो वॉट इज दिस टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन और हाउ डज इट लुक्स लाइक वेल इफ आई वॉन्ट टू गिव ब्रॉडर आइडिया इफ यू टेक अ लार्जर सैम्पल साइज then t distribution is almost same as the z distribution so you will say why to study well the answer is what i said i said when you have a larger sample size then t test will be approximately same as the z distribution the results will not differ that much but when the sample size is small that time t distribution is very helpful okay but then again you will ask what is t distribution well so Uh, let's come to it so let me try to give you a motivation first instead of giving you the direct definition let us try to arrive at that proper definition okay so see you have seen central limit theorem right in earlier lectures so if x is some random variable with mean mu and variance sigma square then we know that x bar follows standard normal distribution and this is the transformation right a mu is the mean this is the standard deviation x bar is the sample mean the statistic x bar then as n increases this gives me the uh, standard normal distribution now the question is what if you don't know the population standard deviation then how to solve this problem well that's where the gosset idea came into picture he said okay if you don't know the population standard deviation you are taking some sample of size n you take the standard deviation of that sample Okay, so if you don't know the population standard deviation, okay, no problem. You play with the standard deviation of the sample, and there's the only difference between the z and the t distribution. If I want to speak broadly, okay. So usually student also have this question: when to use z test, when to use t test. The simple answer is when the population size is small or when the sample size is small. Okay, that's the first thing to observe, and then just see whether do you know the population standard deviation or you don't know. If you know the population standard deviation, go by the z test. If you do not know the population standard deviation, go by the t test. And what is the difference? Simply replace your sigma by s. That's all. Okay, so this is one thing. This is my t variable, and this is my z variable. Now, when why I said a while ago that when you take a large sample size, these two are approximately same they do not differ much why that is obvious right because what is the difference the only difference is of the standard deviation so if you are taking a large sample size i mean or you can say as the sample size will keep on increasing your sample standard deviation will keep on approaching to the population standard deviation right if you have a population of size 1000 suppose if you are taking a sample of size say 50 then you may expect yeah the difference would be much between the population standard deviation and the sample standard deviation but when instead of 50 if you take a sample size of 150 then how huh, you can say okay i have increased the sample so obviously this will be coming closer to the population standard deviation if you take a sample size of 300 so obviously again this will come closer to the sigma so as you keep on increasing your sample size you will be having more and more data and therefore the standard deviation of the sample will almost be same as the standard deviation of the population so whenever we have a larger sample size t and z behaves in the same way so whenever you have a smaller sample size this t fluctuates a lot okay so in that time you cannot take the help of z if you want to play with t for small sample size but for a large sample size you play with t or h doesn't make that much of a difference So this is the first thing. That's I would say the takeaway from the lecture. What is the takeaway from this lecture? That if you don't know the population standard deviation, play with the sample standard deviation, use t table and get the answer. How to use the t table? You know, I will take in a moment. But yeah, this is the main difference about among the z and t. So, but this was the t definition involving x bar. So how can you define in general? If I want to have any random variable, here you are having two random variables, ah, huh? 
दैट ऑल्सो टू मेक श्योर वन ऑब्जर्वेशन टी हियर इज डिपेंडिंग ऑन टू रैंडम वेरिएबल्स एक्स बार एन एस जेड डिपेंड्स ओनली ऑन वन रैंडम वेरिएबल एक्स बार ओके बिकॉज दिस इज कॉन्स्टेंट दिस इज कॉन्स्टेंट दिस इज कॉन्स्टेंट बट इफ यू कीप ऑन चेंजिंग द सैम्पल्स दिस विल कीप ऑन चेंजिंग सो हियर देर आर टू वेरिएबल्स सो फ्रॉम हियर ऑल्सो यू कैन सी T will fluctuate a lot as compared to Z because here there are two variables which which are keeping on changing as you keep on changing the samples, whereas here only x bar will change. So T fluctuates a lot as compared to Z. That is another observation to look into it. Okay, good. So this difference we know now. Now what another thing I want to say is now see T is what here it is the ratio of two variables and we will see the definition in general also it is defined as the ratio of two variables. now what are those two general random variables let's try to arrive that okay now what i will do is i will do some adjustment over here what you do is x bar minus mu divided by sigma by root n divided by s by root n divided by sigma by root n so i just divided by sigma by root n both side okay but what is this this is nothing but my z by central limit theorem and what is this this is nothing but uh, s upon sigma and which i can also write this as square root of s square upon sigma square because square and root will get cancel but i also know from earlier lecture that if i take n minus 1 into s square upon sigma square then this follows what chi square distribution so if i replace my uh, so we call let me call this as v okay so this v is what it is following chi square distribution so what is s square upon sigma square it is v upon n minus 1 so this ultimately z upon square root of v upon n minus 1 so what is t it is a ratio of two random variables the numerator is the standard normal random variable and the bottom is square root of chi square because my v is what it is a chi square distribution with how many degrees of freedom n minus 1 degrees of freedom so in general t distribution is a ratio of two random variables the numerator is the standard normal random variable denominator is square root of chi square random variable divided by its degree of freedom okay so this is what i'm going to define right now okay one point here to observe is i would like to just take a pause that when we are playing with the sample mean and sample standard deviation and all we always assume our population to be normally distributed why normally distributed because i want my z and v to be the independent normal random variables and when a population is normally distributed then one can prove that x bar and s square and hence your s these are independent normal random variables for a normal population so you can say that t is indirectly the ratio of two independent normal random variables with numerator as standard normal and denominator as the chi square okay so you will see many times that they say that in t distribution you assume the population to be normal why because of this reason that under normality normal distribution the sample mean and the uh, sample variance or the sample standard deviation are independent and therefore this is kind of independent uh, ratio of two independent normal random variables so yeah that was the kind of overview about t distribution now let me give you a general definition about the t distribution so in general the definition is if your z is a standard normal uh, is a standard normal random variable your v is a chi square distribution with new degrees of freedom and your z and v are independent then this is how we define the t distribution and its density function is given by some constant into 1 plus t square by degrees of freedom raised to minus degrees of freedom plus 1 by what is this constant is bit complicated it involves gamma function and all so i'm not going to write it over here t is some constant those are interested they can have a look in the book but while solving we are not going to use this density function hence i'm not stating it and t is from minus infinity to infinity so this is my t random variable this is my t variable in general and this is the density function okay now again how does it looks like there's one question now we know that how does the standard normal distribution looks like it is centered at 0 mean is 0 and the variance or the standard deviation is 1 now here t distribution depends on degree of freedom because you can see here we are dividing by the degrees of freedom of this chi square distribution so t depends on degree of freedom okay that's one thing second thing 
t distribution is also centered at zero like z distribution t distribution is also centered at zero that means what i'm saying expectation of a t distribution is zero for that now i need to if i want to prove this how do you prove integration x into f of x or t into f of t so t into this constant if you do expectation will come out to be zero but now that's a bit lengthy calculation so what i will do is just to give you the flavor just to give you the flavor i will show that expectation of t is zero for a specific case which is x bar minus b upon sigma by root n now this is very obvious why because what is expectation of t it is expectation of this whole thing but this is a constant so it will come out into expectation of x bar minus mu but expectation is linear in nature so this is root n by sigma expectation of x bar minus expectation of mu but expectation of mu is mu expectation of constant is always constant but what is expectation of x bar thanks to central limit theorem expectation of x bar is also mu so this this goes away therefore it is zero so i showed that for this particular case expectation is zero in general if you do integration of t into f of t where f of t is that probability density function it do comes out to be zero okay so same like t z distribution t distribution is also centered at zero okay this first thing to observe and moreover it is symmetric in nature now as i said earlier that once you take larger and larger sample size your sample standard deviation will approach to the population standard deviation so therefore as your degrees of freedom will keep on increasing your curve will keep on approaching to the standard normal distribution so for smaller sample size you may have the larger tails but as the sample size will keep on increasing the curve the t distribution curve will keep on approaching to the standard normal distribution so for the smaller degrees of freedom you have a broader tail and as the degrees of freedom will keep on increasing your t distribution will approach to the z distribution and the reason being the sample standard deviation will be coming more closer and closer to the population standard deviation okay so the t distribution is uh, centered at zero mean is zero it is centered at zero it is bell shaped symmetric in nature not bell shaped it is symmetric in nature and as degrees of freedom increase it it becomes bell shaped okay so it's symmetric in nature it is centered at zero because the mean is zero and it depends on degrees of freedom okay so this was one thing and another thing another nice property that one should know about the t distribution is because of the symmetricity because of this symmetricity if suppose this is the graph of t if this is t alpha what is t alpha it is the t value such that area towards the right is alpha now because of symmetricity if i take this as minus t alpha that means this area is also alpha because if this area is alpha this area is also alpha because of symmetricity okay but what is this if this is alpha this remaining area is how much 1 minus alpha so this is also equal to t of 1 minus alpha so this is one nice relation that t of 1 minus alpha is minus of t alpha so yeah that's almost everything i to most of the things i told you about the t distribution what is t distribution how it came into the picture how the graph looks like the nice relation it is symmetric it symmetric about mean zero and uh, it depends on the degree of freedom and when we are playing with the sampling mean in x x bar s square we always assume that the population is normally distributed so that my x bar and s are independent random variables okay and uh, yeah i think this much conceptual part is okay now let's do some examples now before going to the example one should know how to read or how to understand the table t distribution table now when you will open the table the extreme left will consist of the degrees of freedom 1 2 3 4 5 the degrees of freedom and here you will have the values of alpha say 0.05 0.25 0.095 and so on these are the values of alpha what is alpha it is alpha is the nothing but area towards the right this alpha so here you have the alpha values and here the entries in the table will give you the t values so for 4 degree of freedom 
if I want to see what is the T value such that area towards the right is 0.25, this is the T value. If for 5 degrees of freedom, you want to look for the T value such that area towards the right is 0.095, then this is that T value, the intersection part. So the entries over here are the T values. They represent that for what degrees of freedom, your area towards the right will be this much. Okay, so this is how you read the t table. Now let's take some examples. So let's go for the first and a basic example. So let's go for 8.44. So these questions are from the Walpole book. So what is the first question? You want to find the t value such that for 14 degrees of freedom and area towards the right is 0 0.025. Okay, because what is the notation? If you recall the notation, then what does t alpha represent? It is the t value such that area towards the right is how much area towards the right is alpha this much area is alpha and this we represent by t suffix alpha so here you want to find t of 0 0.025 and what is the degrees of freedom the degrees of freedom is nothing but putting okay so now let's go to the table and try to see what is the answer so here is a table for t distribution and if you see the extreme left is nothing but the degrees of freedom and topmost rho is the alpha and this 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 they represents the area towards the right and these values are the t values. So what is given to us the area it is given to us that the degree of freedom is 14 right. So you go for 14 row if you observe here where is 0 0.025 the last column. So in the 14 degrees of freedom if you go for the last column what do you get and the answer is nothing but I think 2.145. So that is the t value okay so i hope you know now how to read the table now let's go for the b part you want to find minus t 0 0.10 when your new is 10 okay so let us try to solve this problem you want to find minus t of 0 0.10 right now if you recall the table that we saw in the lecture this is how the t distribution looks like right so if this is my t alpha that means area towards the right is alpha because of symmetricity this is minus t alpha and this side is how much alpha okay now i want to find minus t of 0 0.10 so to find this you find this t value so that area towards the right is 0 0.10 so how will you find you can go into the t table and you look for alpha is equal to 0 0.1 and the degrees of freedom is going to be how much it is going to be 10 right so nu is 10 if you go to the table so here if you see alpha 0 0.10 and how much 14 degrees of freedom it is 1.345 okay so, but we want minus of that so what will be the answer minus 1.345 okay so that is the answer for the second question and now what about the c part t suffix 0 0.995 when degrees of freedom is 7 now here if you see the table t distribution table i will give you the hint for this the top alpha row you will never see 0 0.995 in the given two tables from the walpole book at least okay so how will you find this so now you have to use the relation. What is T of 1 minus alpha? It is minus T of alpha. So what alpha you should take so that 1 minus alpha will be 0 0.995. You take alpha to be 0 0.005. So in that case, this T 0 0.995 is equal to minus T suffix 0 0.005. So under 7 degrees of freedom and alpha equal to 0 0.005, you look what is the T value and just put minus sign to it. Well, it comes out to be minus 3.499. Okay, so have a look. If you don't get, let me know. I will solve it for you. Okay, now the same problems can be done for 8.45 ABC. You want to find the probability that T is taking the value less than 2.365 when nu is 7. But this is same as 1 minus probability of T greater or equal 2.365. And now you have to find the T value. So you want to find the probability. That means you want to find the alpha such that t probability of t is greater or equal to 2.365 so now let's again go to the table so here is the table now t is 7 7 degrees of freedom you want to find probability of t greater than what is the value 2 t greater than 2.365 so where you can see 2.365 here at the end you can see 2.365 so what is the alpha alpha is 0 0.025 that is the probability so for the first part it is 1 minus 0 0.025 and whatever the answer you get that is the answer for the a part and on the similar lines your job is to solve b and the c part if you don't get you can ask me i will solve it for you 
Now on the similar lines, one can solve remaining problems. For the B part, again the same thing. Here no need to do 1 minus. Simply look, go at nu equal to 24, 24 degrees of freedom. Look, where is that T is 1.318. Accordingly, you will get the alpha. Now for the C part, how will you do? The standard, the, prop, the way we did our uh, Z distribution things. Okay, how did we do that? So, it's uh, probability of T less than 2.179 minus probability of t less than minus 1.356 and then again use a and b part you know how to solve it you can do c part as well as d part same way you can think of 8.46 as well so try to solve this problem so if you don't get you can ask me in the comment section i will solve it for you okay again the same thing for the 8.47 as well you have to find the value of k sample size is given to you so degrees of freedom will be n minus 1 so 23 will be the degrees of freedom now let's go for 8.48 question now a manufacturing firm claims that the batteries used in their electronic games will last an average of 30 hours to maintain this average 16 batteries who are having a sample size of 16 are tested if the t value fall between this minus t 0 0.025 and plus t 0 0.025 if the t value that we are going to find if it falls in this range the firm is satisfied with the claim okay and if the t value will not lie in this then the firm will not be satisfied with the claim okay so now what is the given what conclusion should the firm draw from a sample so you are taking a sample whose mean is 27.5 and the standard deviation s so here you can see the sample standard deviation is given to be 5 so we have to use t distribution okay assume the distribution is approximately normal great so assumption is also satisfied so we will use the t variable so let us try to use the t variable so what does the t variable says it is nothing but x bar minus mu upon s by root n if you put up the values what do you get 27.5 minus 30 divided by 5 square root of 16 which is nothing but 4 and if you do this calculation your answer will come out to be minus 2 so your t value is minus 2 now question is what is minus t 0 0.025 and what is plus t 0 0.025 well you want to find the t value such that area towards the right is 0 0.025 now, if you go to the table the answer will come out to be 2.131 so therefore min this is minus 2.131 now is your t value lying in this interval minus 2.131 and 2.131 yes minus 2 do belong to this interval therefore the firm is satisfied with the claim okay i think i have missed this part so let me just take this yeah so you can see that your minus 2 is lying in this interval therefore the firm is satisfied with the claim so no need to worry okay so this is how you have to use the t distribution whenever the sample standard deviation is given to you so i hope the idea is clear to you now i will stop here now when we will see estimation theory test of hypothesis there we will see that t t, t test will come very frequently because that time we will only be knowing the uh, information about the samples so that's why t test is very important and when we study estimation theory and test of hypothesis we will again come across it so yeah i think this is a good point to stop if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you